the New Zealand Hamilton mission, it was actually a mission previously a long time ago and they, they did away with it when they were consolidating um, a few of the missions but recently they brought it out with the age lowering in the mission field and um, you know it's, it's a really really amazing place. The people in New Zealand are some of the closest people to the spirit that I've ever met. In the dedicatory prayer of the New Zealand Hamilton Temple, President Kimball, he tells the people that they are the descendants of Hagoth, who was a person in the Book of Mormon who left in the later chapters of Alma, and they went into the islands of the sea, and they were never seen of again. And so those people, they were very, very righteous. And still to this day, many of their cultures resemble those cultures that were, were shown in the Book of Mormon. And so when you teach the people the truth, when you read them the stories of their, of their ancestors, they're very, very close to the Spirit. And so many times they know that it's, that it's true. And it's, it's really, really amazing to see when, when they remember who they are and their heritage. And it just it, it fulfills the prophecies that are, that are proclaimed in the Book of Mormon. It's, it was really, really cool. I think there's about 12 stakes mm -hmm. in, in New Zealand. And the church is really strong there. There was a time when the people in New Zealand were looking for a church to go to, many of the Maori people. And, you know, they had the Catholics coming over from England and a bunch of other churches that were, were trying to convert people to come, come to them. And so a, a Maori king, uh, he, he said, you know, I'm going to figure out which church is right for the Maori people. And so he went and he prayed. He fasted and prayed for three days. And when he came out at the end of those three days, he, he told the people, he said, the church, the true church is for the Maori people is not here yet. But when they come, they will, they will come two by two. They will come from the east. And when they pray, they'll raise their right arm to the square. And, and so the people at that time, they, they didn't have the church. Um, but shortly thereafter, two missionaries showed up to one of their villages and they offered to pray. And they noticed immediately that these people were the fulfillment of the prophecy that was proclaimed so long ago. And right then and there, a whole entire village was, was baptized. And from there, the Maori people just continued to flourish in the gospel. And so many, many wards have a lot of Maori people who have been in the church for a long time. And some of the early missionaries like Matthew Cowley have some amazing stories about how people just flocked to the church in the early days in New Zealand. Whereas today, now there's so many descendants and the church is really strong there there's about the population is about four million and there's about 40 to 50 thousand members in new zealand the hamilton mission covers from auckland down to over to gisborne and then over to taranaki so that's in the northern island of new zealand you know we taught people from everywhere um, there are people from european descent from south africa there are people from Cambodia that we taught, there are people from China that we taught from basically all the different islands of the sea. And so it was really, really amazing to see how you know, everyone from different cultures, they all came, but they all were seeking for that same thing. And that's to find a purpose in their life and to find out how to be happy. And it was, it was a great opportunity to be able to share the gospel with them and share what makes or that, that their Father in Heaven has a plan for them. And it's, it's really cool to see when a family who you know, isn't a part of the church, see the, the gospel and how it changes their life and apply it.